Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, strap yourselves in, this is going to be a long one. Uh, today's video I'm hoping to um, just put some content back on the internet that I previously had on some of my websites in blog format. Um, today what I'm going to do is use Vencad to um, describe some information about Vincent Bachmeier's pieces. And um, yes, I will continue after this. Right, so I'm actually going to start off with um, a few disclaimers because uh, I had feedback from previous uh, attempts at getting this information out and um, and I think it's important that we, we all know where we're coming from with this. So um, first and foremost, this is not a comprehensive guide to um, Vincent Bach mouth pieces or, or trumpet mouth pieces in general. And the reason I'm focusing on Vincent Bach is because in the country where I grew up um, as a trumpet player, primarily that's where everyone's focus lies. It is still the tradition to use Vincent Bach um, not only as um, you know the the brand of choice for for mouthpieces for a classical musician, um, but also um, as a guide, people tend to just refer to the numbering system as though we understand what it all means. You know, do, does a certain mouthpiece? Um, oh, that's like kind of like a seven size. That means point six four inches um, internal diameter, or is it? Uh, you know, is it like a ten and a half, which is 0.62, or is it like a one and a half, which is, you know, and so on and so on. And then we talk about C cups and B cups and A cups and all that sort of business. And it's all in reference to the, the, the idea that Vincent Bach actually had a consistent design system, which, you know, I would love to be corrected on, but I was, as you'll see today, um, it's not as cut and dry. It's not as clear as you may believe. And actually, um, I hope that the content of this video serves to dispel most people's beliefs about Vincent Bachmeier's pieces overall. Um, it is not so. This is not an opinion piece. This is not uh, me saying that there is anything good or bad about these designs. What I am saying is that there is definitely something really bad about our traditions and the folklore that surrounds um, these designs of mouthpieces. It's quite normal for a player in my in my country to um, to start off lessons with the trumpet and the mouthpiece that came in the case, and the mouthpiece will be a seven C. And after some time, their teacher will say to you, "Oh, you're a big boy now. You should go up to a five C." And then they'll play on that mouthpiece for a little bit of time, and then you know, "Oh, you're getting close to taking your grade eight exam," or you're going to be going to university soon, so maybe we should get you to, to move up to a one and a half C. That's what all the orchestral guys use. You should be playing on a big mouthpiece. Um, and this video will prove that that way of thinking is absolute nonsense. And not only is it nonsense, but it's, it's the exact opposite of true um, in terms of um, what people believe they are achieving by changing from one mouthpiece to the next. So, um, without further ado, hopefully you understand my intentions. Um, oh yes, the other thing I should I should mention, which is is actually very important. This this information today is primarily focused upon um, the um, cup diameter and and cup volume of a series of different mouthpieces. I have not, I'm not going to be uh, talking very much about the rim shape, which is actually very important. Um, the way that the rim sits on your lips will definitely influence, um, you know, the muscles that you try to use as you manipulate sound on, the, on an instrument. Um, it will influence uh, comfort, it will influence ease of ease of note production, it will influence stamina. Um, but it's not what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about is the volume of the cup, almost entirely, but also the diameter of the cup because it comes up a number of times and it's quite um, interesting to see. 
Um, the reason that I'm focused on cup volume is because it will it is the primary factor that influences sound, the type of sound that you hope to get from from using a certain mouthpiece. Um, and the ease with which that you can play the full range of notes on the instrument. Um, there is also the, the, the factor of the shape of a cup, um, but I would uh, strongly uh, argue that the shape of the cup will influence the physical feedback that you feel um, from, from, say, air hitting the cup and bouncing back it's not that simple it's more to do with pressure and and wave reflection but you will feel more feedback from say a ck a c-shaped cup than a v-shaped cup however if you've got two mouthpieces that have the same volume this if they are physically the same size in three-dimensional space then um the sound they create the effect that they have on on your tone and um, the ease with which you can play the full range of notes on the instrument are all determined by the volume and not by the shape. So uh, without further ado, um, we're nearly getting into the start of the video. Um, you should know that I'm going to make six points and you've already seen how long it's taken me to get started. So be prepared for a bit of time. Um, however, I do feel that this is a very valuable lesson that would serve any trumpet player to take the time to watch and to understand because um, we live in a different world from the, the one in which I learned to play music. Um, you know, in the past we depended very heavily upon uh, the knowledge and experience of others and the truth is that the knowledge and experience of those people was just old wives' tales being passed around. This is what so-and-so said, this is what such-and-such such a person thinks is better, and they can play better than me, so therefore they must be right, and all this, and blah, 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 and compound that by 50 years worth of, um, you know, oh, this person used this mouthpiece in the orchestra and all, but they won their audition with that mouthpiece, and they only played this mouthpiece because they had an accident and they've got scar tissue, and you know who I'm talking about. And you've heard that story before. And anyway, it goes on and it goes on. And this whole idea that, oh, you need to be on a bigger mouthpiece because it will make you sound this way, and you need to be on a... Um, I know I'm losing my audience immediately by going down this path, but this is what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. Six points and a conclusion. It might take a while. I hope not to get too derailed. Um, hopefully you stick around. All right then, so here we are in, um, in Vencad. And what we're going to do first of all, let's have a look here. Right, so first, first things first. Um, some years ago, I read an article on Tumblr of all places. Um, I don't even remember who wrote it, which is unfortunate. I should have done my research. I believe it may have been... Mm, no, don't have a clue. I'm not going to waste time thinking about it. But they, they had this article called Not All C Cups Are Created Equal. I should also have mentioned in the beginning that I'm only talking about C cup mouthpieces because if I get into the, the numbered but no letters and I get into the, the D cups and I get into the the B cups, the B cups are a whole other world of um, explanations. I also would argue that they are intended for rotary trumpets and not for, for, for piston valve trumpets, but I'm sure that many would disagree. Anyway, um, let's start off with the subject of not all C cups are created equal. I'm going to pull up here um, on Venkad three mouthpieces. Vincent Bach 1.5C, that's probably one of the most significant ones of this conversation. Um, Vincent Bach, uh, I've got to stop saying Vincent Bach, I won't be here all day. Um, <laughs> 3C, okay, that's a favourite for a lot of people. Um, and then I'll bring up the classic, find one in every trumpet case, Vincent Bach 7C. So, um, here we have three C-cup mouthpieces, and what you will notice 
is that um, they are all different shapes. Um, they're actually quite similar in, in diameter. So, you know, again, already looking at this, look at the rim shape of that. That 7C has got a much thinner rim than the others. Um, so what we've got here, you'd expect really that, um, that, you know, they would be m m visibly different in terms of width and that, you know, maybe they would be the same shape, but different sizes. And actually what you, it's not what you have at all. What you have is that the 7C is actually the deepest mouthpiece. You have that the 3C is, is the shallowest mouthpiece and has quite a, a much tighter curve at say this point here where the mouse is than the other two. And, um, and yes, again, you know, interestingly, not only is the 7C the deepest down here, but it also has the broadest cup. Um, and so when somebody says to you, oh, you know, we, you, you, should, um, you should progress from a 7C to a one and a half C, let's take the 3C out of the picture for a second. Um, for this much of the mouthpiece, they pretty much, you know, are the same. You can see here, again, not going too much into the rim, but the, the 7C has got a different high point of the rim. This curve comes up like that, and you will feel that with the lip. It will feel more, it will feel sharper. I would, I would argue much less comfortable. Um, but then as you come down here, you can see that actually the 7C is the bigger mouthpiece. It is objectively larger. Now, most people would say to you, oh, the one and a half C is a much bigger mouthpiece than the seven C. Uh -uh, you're wrong. Have a look at the numbers here. Um, the cup volume of the one and a half C is, uh, this is all in cubic inches, by the way, 0 0.0730. And then over here, 0 0.0773, the seven C is a much bigger mouthpiece. So when we're starting out, we all start on a bigger mouthpiece and then we graduate onto smaller mouthpieces. Let that sink in for a minute. <clears throat> Although you may believe that the one and a half C is actually wider, when you look at it with say this much lip penetration, it is not a bigger mouthpiece at all. It is actually exactly the same size in terms of, in terms of what your lip feels inside the cup. And then when you look at the cup overall, it's a much bigger mouthpiece. So there's our first point. That's the th that's something, a starting point that we should all consider um, when comparing our traditional uh, graduation process from a one and a half C, uh, sorry, to a one and a half C from a seven C. Now take all of that away and we'll move on. Oh yes, so what I had um, sort of wanted to also say about those same mouthpieces, I should have checked the notes before um, closing it down, but I think it's actually quite helpful for see people to see how I'm using this program because um, then you can learn to use it too and you can learn even more information that will serve you as a player. So um, when you when you look at these mouthpieces, what you will find, I prefer it this way up, what you will find is that these three designs, the 7C, the 3C and the 1.5C, are actually the ones that do not fit into the, the system. These are the outliers, they are the unusual mouthpieces that, that make the bow, the, 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 that make the Vincent Bach mouthpiece comparison chart look like nonsense and in many ways it is but um, you can see here that you know these mouthpieces are, are all wildly different I think I, I don't think I've made that point well enough so what I'm going to do is um, is pull up th some others and you'll see what I mean let's leave the 7c on there but I'm going to add in the 5c and I'm going to add in the 2C. Um, I'm at risk of, of encroaching upon a different point that I, from another part of the video, but let's just do this to help you all out. What on earth has happened to that little thing there? So what you'll see here is that these mouthpieces are much more similar 
than the three the three previous mouthpieces. Um, interestingly, here the five C is is much um, shallower at that point. But what you're seeing is that that you know. If you were to take three mouthpieces and say, oh, these ones are progressively smaller or larger than each other, they are in many ways exactly that. You can see how you've got a, a much more sensical progressive system here. And actually, again, when you compare the rims, it's incredible how, you know, how these lines cross over at various points and just show that, yeah, look, what's the orange one, the 2C? much more bowl shaped but then a much tighter entrance to the throat i would say that that 2c is much more what people understand as being a c cup um i think it's phyllis stork that argued that all modern trumpet mouthpieces are in fact double cups and you can see if you were to draw a line here where the mouth, mouth uh, mouse is that you've got a c cup at the top and you've got a v cup at the bottom and you're, you know, you're going to find that universally across different brands of mouthpieces. So what's the point I'm trying to make here? Um, yeah, so that's right. Okay, so the next thing on, on I, I wanted to do was to show the, um, the common teaching progression. So the one thing that I've mentioned before is that we may start off with a Bach 7C um, in our case. And at some point our teacher will say to us oh we need you know we you, you need to be developing your sound a bit let's get you onto a bigger mouthpiece and they'll give you a 5c and they look at this and they go oh oh but hang on a minute okay so look the throat entrance is a little bit bigger that is going to have a positive effect on your sound if you're going for a sort of traditional classical sound which is you know uh and let's not get into that. Um, but you can see slightly bigger throat entrance, so that's going to give you maybe a, a slightly broader or darker sound, maybe. Um, but you've got a shallower cup here, significantly shallower cup. It can, up until this point where the lips may protrude into the mouthpiece, um, they are still the same width. I want you to look at the numbers here for a second. Um, cup diameter. Um, so 7c 0.68 5c 0.67 but it's 0.678 so if we rounded that up technically the 7c is a bigger mouthpiece but essentially they are the same size 5c 7c same size now what we do have here i said i wasn't going to talk about rims too much the 5c has got a more comfortable rim that's going to sit on your chops a bit better so um yeah not a lot of, not a lot in terms of progress here if you look at the cup volume the cup the um, 7c is the deeper mouthpiece 0 0 0.773 0 0.0773 and then here 0 0.768 uh, if you rounded that up 0 0.0770 oh, they're the same mouthpiece so we've got a very slight variation that maybe a professional may be able to feel if they were, you know, using these, making a decision about using these mouthpieces long term, but a student is literally throwing their money down the drain by buying a new mouthpiece that is exactly the same as their old mouthpiece. So now let's get the big boy toy out, which is the one and a half C. Everyone wants to play on that eventually, don't they? Um, and what have we got? Oh, we've actually just got more of the same. But here we go. The one and a half C is clearly the most shallow mouthpiece. It has clearly got the small, the tightest throat entrance, so a little bit more resistant. It's clearly got the shallowest cup, right? And then it's clearly got the broadest rim. So again, these are factors that, um, oh, just, just go cup volume, yeah, 0 0.073. So here, this is a significantly sh smaller cup volume. And our rim diameter, 0 0.068, oh, isn't that exactly the same as the 7C? I mean, actually, the, the 1.5C is closer to the 7C than the 5C is. So are we making progress here? Are we going on to a, a wider mouthpiece? No. Are we going on to a bigger mouthpiece? No. So why do people think that they are graduating from a 7C up to a 1.5C? It's utter insanity. Now, 
I know that people at this point are going to be sitting, um, shouting at their computer going, you know, this guy's wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about here. Essentially, when you are putting that rim onto your lip, what you are feeling is the bite and you're feeling the, 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 how wide the rim is. Um, and I'm not going to get into other brands, but I've showed in a previous video that my, the mouthpieces I make and sell are, are significantly wider on this side and at this side than the Vincent Bach rims. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, an it's just an interesting thing. I do think that rim shape is, in is very important. And obviously, you know, when you put that mouthpiece on your lips, this little, little bit here, this orange line of the 7C, that's what makes it feel like a smaller mouthpiece. That's what makes it feel like an uncomfortable mouthpiece for many people. Vincent Bach believes that having this bite here um, would actually discourage people from using too much pressure. But anyway, I hope that you've learned from looking at this one here, that in fact, when people are progressing from a 7C to a 5C and a 5C to a 1.5C, what you're actually getting is a different rim shape, which becomes more comfortable. Let that sink in. It's about comfort. It's not about size. You're getting a cup diameter, which is identical. And the, the smaller the number, apparently, <laughs> the shallower the cup. So um, when people say you need a bigger mouthpiece to get that orchestral sound, uh -uh. It's not true. Okay, so let's uh, get the notes out and I'll try to keep the ball, keep us moving forward. So oh, point number four, is there a better logical progression? Um, that's a quick question for me, really. No, I don't think there is. Unless what we were to do was let's take the 7C out because I don't like it. Let's take the 5C out because I've never really used one. Let's bring in our old friend, the Vincent Bach 3C mouthpiece, because this is something that maybe it's worth getting my spreadsheet out at this point. The 3C, I've argued in the past, is actually um, one of the smallest Vincent Bach mouthpieces in the line, and certainly in terms of what people like to think. So something that I haven't mentioned up to this point is that a lot of people love to think Oh, you know, I've, I actually get too tired playing on a one and a half C all the time because I play a bit of jazz. I've played in a big band and I shouldn't really be using orchestral equipment for that. So I would like something that's a bit of an all rounder. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring back the seven C. I like something that's a bit of an all rounder. Now I know that if I turn up to play in this, in this orchestra or this big band with a 7C, I'm going to get criticised, despite the fact that by looking at this chart you can see that it's a significantly larger mouthpiece. I am going to keep saying it over and over again, because you need to get that deep in your head. Um, the 7C is the big one. Um, and so they go, okay, well, you know, I can't play on a 1.5C because it's too big. I can't play on a 7C because it's embarrassing. It's too small. No, it's not. So what I'm going to do is play on a 3C and they stick the 3C in not knowing that the 3C is actually the smallest mouthpiece in this, on my list. Um, am I telling the truth at this point? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm going to take away the 7C and I'm going to take away the 1.5C and what we're going to bring in is, is the mouth, one of the mouthpieces that I would recommend people actually use. I think this is probably one of the best um, Vincent Bach mouthpieces the 10 and a half C. Now, sorry that I keep mixing up the colors. Um, the orange is now a Vincent Bach 10 and a half C. And what you can see here is, yes, we have a visibly smaller um, cup diameter. You can see that finally we've found a mouthpiece that's a little bit smaller than um, a one and a half C. <laughs> um, so, so what do we have here? We've got um, 0.66 rather than 0.67. Okay, so when I say smaller, I mean, we're not getting into lead trumpet territory, are we? But the 10.5C, when compared to the 3C, is a deeper mouthpiece, and it's got a bigger opening to the throat. I'm, uh, I'm quite tempted to pull up the 5C just to see how that fits into this. 
I know that this is such a lot of going back and forth, but this is what happens in people's minds when they talk about mouthpieces. Whoa, okay, the 5C is much bigger. It doesn't even track the same curve. So let's take it out. It's not a part of this conversation. The point I want to make with this is that if you are a 3C player, um, you need to know that the, the volume of your cup is actually smaller 0.0682 is actually smaller than a Vincent Bach 10.5 C, which is a 0.0696. Okay, so that means that you will get a better sound in most people's um, sort of understanding of what a better sound is. You will get an equal or better sound from a 10.5 C than you would from a 3 C. So if you're using a 3C to try and be middle of the road and to try and have an all-rounder, I would recommend getting a 10.5C. And why do I say that? Well, having this smaller um, diameter at the top here, having the rim like this, it's gonna feel much broader, much later on the chops. It's actually gonna feel like a significantly smaller mouthpiece. Um, will keep your lip from collapsing into the cup so much because at this depth where the mouse is here, the, the lip is still being held back, it's being held out of the cup. That's why a lot of people would feel choked up you, when they switch from a 3C to a 10.5C because the lip is not being allowed to collapse into this massive space here. But if you can keep your lip out of this space, then the, the, the volume of the cup is effectively much larger. So not only is it actually larger, but you will also use more of it. And so you'll get a better sound on the 10.5C than you will on the 3C. You will have, uh, because of this, you'll be, because of the smaller diameter, you will have easier range and you will have better stamina. So that's a lesson for people, for all you 3C players out there who think that the 3C is the greatest mouthpiece in the world um, or the most general issue mouthpiece. 10.5C is, obje is objectively a better mouthpiece and you're not going to lose sound, you're actually going to have a better sound. Even though um, it's a smaller diameter, it's a deeper cup, it's, a de it's, a, it's got this different cup shape. So supporting the idea that the 3C and the 7C are all outliers in this system, that is, um, that is an argument that you may wish to choose something slightly different. Now. When I tell people you should try this mouthpiece for a while, I don't mean for a few hours or for a week. I mean for three or six months. And I, and I can guarantee you that after three or six months, you won't care about going back to the 3C. Um, it's, just, it's just not the way. Now, I do want at this point to step in with point number five. We're getting quite close to the end. I've only got six points to make. Point number five is that the system is not nonsense. Or the, the point is that the most popular mouthpieces are the ones that don't fit into the system. So I want to take a second to pull up, um, let's go with, with the monster. The monster, not the one, which is the real monster, but the, the one C is this. And then we're gonna get the two C, which is this. We're not going to get the 3C because it would look like a toy compared to those. But we're going to get the, um, was it the 5C? Yes, and the 5C. Um, and, and what we can see here is three mouthpieces that, obviously the, one is, the 1C is a much bigger mouthpiece. But generally speaking, again, we can see that they've basically got the same idea in terms of cup shape. They are basically a very similar, I'm not going to say same, but the way that these lines cross over at the bottom of the first cup, the C portion of the cup, not the V portion of the cup, um, the way that they cross over, I'm just going to make the, the one C invisible, um, shows that they're basically the same sort of depth. The, but you've got a little bit of progress in terms of, I mean, look, you make one bit smaller, you make the other bit bigger. It's always, this is something I've always said about Vincent Bach is that for every good idea he had, he had a bad idea to compensate. <laughs> and it's really unfortunate that that's the, the situation that we've, um, 
that we're in. But um, if you look at these volumes, you can at least see that they get progressively smaller as the number, the size of the mouthpiece goes up. Interestingly, the 2C and the 5C have got very, very similar rims. Um, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, and then, um, yeah, but anyway, the point is that when I, when I look at these, I see a system that makes more sense because as you zoom out a little bit more, yeah, the one sees bigger, but they're all basically the same depth. What's changing here is actually the, the, the perceivable cup diameter. And so we could argue that, yes, we, we, we've got a system that we could follow. This is probably where Vincent Bach's mind was at. It was like to take this shape take this shape and make it bigger or smaller and then people can choose a size that, that, that allows them to achieve their musical goals. Excuse me. Um, and so, yes, yeah, to say that it's all nonsense is not true, but um, it gives me an opportunity to, to take a sidestep and pull up this, um, pull up this little chart that I've done because um, if you were to take these, let's do it like this, take the 1C, take the 2C, take the 5C. Um, what you've actually got is a system whereby, okay, the, like I said, the diameter of these two is not much different, but you are getting some sort of uh, progression in terms of size. What happens if you put the 7C in here? Oh look, the cup on the 2C and the 7C is identical. And again, the width of the 7C is actually bigger than the 2C. How, how is this? <laughs> How have people not noticed this in all these decades of, of uh, what have I done? Let's do it like this. All these decades of, of playing. Interestingly, uh, this is something that I did on, on, an, on a blog post in the past, is I took, took this and I went, if you sort it by cut volume, um, which is column D, then what you have is that, yes, the 3C is the smallest mouthpiece, 10.5C, like I said, and then the 1.5C is the next smallest mouthpiece, and then a reversal of everybody's expectations. Okay, so I want to take a second to sort of figure out where exactly do um, these half numbers fit into the system, how, um, how can we kind of make more sense? Well, let's find more things that make sense. What I'm going to do is pull up um, Vincent Bach. Oh, don't go the asymmetric route. Um, uh, 1C. Okay, orange, 1C. The next one we're going to pull up is uh, one and a half c And I should also have, uh, what I should have done is one and a quarter C. So here, um, what we can see again is quite simply um, a progressive system of going from okay our 1c is our big daddy um, our uh, one and a quarter c is is a little bit smaller and our one and a half c is even smaller than that but the really interesting thing is that the number the number one doesn't really refer directly to the cup diameter You've got, I mean, you can see that the cup diameter or the, you know, the the rim diameter as a lot of people will call it. Um, I've put these on in the wrong order. Let's let's do it properly because it's, it's you need to be able to see it as it, you know, in, in so one C, one and a half C, and then one and a quarter C. If you look at the cup diameter, then what the biggest one, 0 0.70 the next one 0.69, the next one 0.68. So, you know, how they compare to the 5C and the 7C, don't even, don't even ask me because it's insane. But at least you can see with these three mouthpieces that you have a clear difference. Now, where there is a bit of a pattern with, you know, with a lot of mouthpiece designers, Reynolds Reynold Schilke being another, that they do favor the bigger sizes. Maybe it is that they, they were dealing with more orchestral musicians, or maybe it's just that it was more it's more of our our popular trend to be using these ones. But it's like, why would you sell a mouthpiece and call it a one and a half C and actually have it be smaller than one that you call the seven C if these numbers are supposed to be, you know, 
uh, represent the size of the mouthpiece. It's, th that doesn't make sense at all. So anyway, here is an interesting progression. It's one that I wanted to show you so that next time you're thinking about a larger mouthpiece, if it's going to be a 1C, a 1.25C, a 1.5C, this is the difference. You know, the cups get progressively smaller. Um, the 1.5 is the shallowest, the 1C is the deepest. Um, you know, the throat entrance, again, it's, it's, it's the same in every case, that the 1.5 is the smallest, the 1.25 is slightly bigger, the 1C is bigger than that still. Um, this is a very consistent design system, but it's not what it's not the design system that people think they're buying. I think if I were to show that picture to, to people, they would believe that they're looking at a one and a half, a five C, and a seven C, because in their mind that's what the differences are. But that's not that's not actually the case at all. This is this is the sort of progressive system that if you're going to follow that kind of logic, which I don't recommend. But if you are going to follow that kind of logic, this is what you should be choosing. Now, what I want to do for a second here is uh, I'm not going to compare the ones to the twos because the twos are just something completely different. The twos are much more bowl shaped. And so they are more like a, what people think a C cup should look like, basically. Now, the reason that I actually ended up pulling up the two and a half C in my um, in my uh, preparation for this video was twofold. First of all, somebody once said to me about um, um, someone was talking to me about James Watson, yeah, the the British trumpet player who is now unfortunately not with us anymore. They were saying about James Watson that he played on a two and a half C mouthpiece and that he wasn't really that known for having a good sound. I don't think that that's true at all. If you actually look at the old articles that were written about James Watson when he was young, he was definitely celebrated for his sound. But I can remember him coming into my college and giving us a talk once when he was talking about how he just picked this mouthpiece and he stuck with it through his career and it works and, you know, stop messing around. And my, my teacher at the time was saying, oh, you know, two and a half C is actually a small, you know, quite a small mouthpiece and blah, 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 all the rest. Long story short, he's not right. The two, the two and a half C is much, much bigger than the one and a half C. I don't know why, but the reason I pulled, another reason that I pulled it up in, in my comparisons is I wanted to do a one and a half C compared to the two and a half C compared to the three C, because again, logically you would think, that you're going to be getting bigger and bigger each time and then suddenly bam the two and a half c is bigger than your one and a half c your three c is smaller than all of them so here is here's our more bowl shaped twos the two c is the smallest as you'd expect the two and a half c is slightly bigger and then the two and three quarter c is insane what's interesting about this is that unlike the one the one and a quarter and the one and a half that i showed you a minute ago is that the rims are more similar. You haven't got progressively smaller rims, rim or progressively smaller cup diameter. And then similarly, with, this, with the 2C, that's our shallowest mouthpiece. It's our more C, tra more traditional C-shaped bowl. But the V cup here, um, again, slightly more open, it just, it's tighter like this. And then when you go to the bigger ones, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is these are, I, I don't know what I have to say about it, but I just think that it's really interesting to look at this. You see that again, there's a point here where this is obviously where our, our um, throat, no, that's not our throat entrance, that's the bottom. These are much less of a double cup, aren't they? You've got much more of a C cup, but you know, the two, the two C less so, and then the other two more so. I used to own a two and three quarter C and it was a massive mouthpiece. Um, if you look at the, the, the numbers here, cup volume. Um, so 2774, that's I, I showed you a moment ago on the spreadsheet, is identical to a 7C. And then you've got slightly bigger to 078 and then even bigger 082. That's one of the biggest ones that we've seen um, the two and a half C, two and three quarter C isn't on my chart, but if you look at this, that's yeah, um, bigger than a one C. 
So the two and three quarter C is actually bigger than a one C. Um, that's good to know. Uh, well, it's worth knowing because you can't just go, oh, I need the biggest mouse piece. Let's get the smallest number. Sorry for keeping doing that voice, but I've just, I've, I've literally got, um, you know, 30 years of listening to people spread these lies about mouse pieces and this, this logical fallacy that's, um, this folklore that, you know, it's not the case. Okay. I just wanted to, uh, do one little thing. And then we're going to tie it up because I've become very repetitive and um, you don't need this. You can, one, if you download Vencad, you can play with it to your heart's content. And believe me, I've wasted a lot of time going back and forth doing this. Let's look at the 2C compared to the 7C. Um, oh, look, the 2C is, is much tighter entrance to the throat. It's slight, it's more bowl shaped cup. It is the same cup volume. It is the same for all intents and purposes diameter. Okay, so the 7C's got this. But you know, when we were comparing the 7C to the one and a half, I've got to pull it up, comparing it to the one and a half C, the difference there in those shapes of the, the cups, sorry, shapes of the rims, the 7C, yeah, you so look, that's what's making your mouthpiece feel bigger or smaller. But according to this, the 2C has got even more bite than the 7C and then a much broader rim. Um, so there we go. So there are, there are more outliers to the system. If you pull up the 8C, it's, it looks like a, a wide, it looks like a wide rim, but it slopes like that. Um, I don't think that would be very comfortable. You've got all sorts of things like the 10 and three quarters. Um, and needless to say, there are much smaller mouthpieces than the ten and a half, excuse me, than the ten and a half C. And you can just go on like this all day. It's, it's, in, it's actually utter insanity to keep looking at it. But I hope that I've made, at least in some way, a strong argument why when people are recommending these sort of traditions to, um, to their pupils, they are doing, they're not doing it from an if informed uh, perspective. Okay, so now let's just um, try and tie this up a little bit. So do I have any conclusions? I don't think I have much in the way of conclusions other than anything I've said already. And that is, um, maybe I could let you know that my, as far as I'm concerned, all Vincent Bach mouthpieces are the same, or at least, um, no, I mean, I'm just proving to you that's not true. I just spent 45 minutes talking about how that's not true. But it's like, to me, they all basically sound the same. I think that over time, people will adapt and, you know, use more or less lip intrusion to the point where they find the tone that they want. And it's achievable with any of these mouthpieces. I do really believe that, that beginners and advanced players should, if they're going to use a Vincent Bach, should all be using a 10.5C unless you get into using um, B cups. Um, the B cups uh, are, are not like the C cups at all. The B cups are all basically identical. Um, they just close in and open up at the top depending on the diameter you want, but three quarters of the mouthpiece is exactly the same all the way from the 10B, the 7B, the you know, all the way up. All, you know, 3B, the 1B. And so, again, if you're looking at say looking at a three and then a three three b and then a three c a three d maybe you're going to get some some similar sort of um uh you know logical progression there in the same way that you had the logical progression going from a one and a half to one and a quarter to a one c but then you know where it, where does it explain that in the in the marketing materials where is that explained on the charts who are the experts that are actually out there explaining to trumpet players so that they can make decent informed decisions about this stuff it does it's not happening it doesn't exist so um yes that that will be the end of my long long old rant and hopefully i've made some some points that you can take away and ponder Hopefully you can go back and pause it at different times and find 
uh, the comparisons that you want. There, there are, you know, so many more permutations that we could have made, so many more comparisons. But you've got the the spreadsheet there that you could screenshot, and you've got, um, you know, various sort of uh, th things that you can look at. So. Um, hopefully I've uh, helped be satisfied that I've addressed this pet peeve, but essentially, um, here's, here's a, here's just a more general sort of thing I could say. Um, don't believe everything you read on a mouthpiece chart because they, they don't contain the information that you actually need. Um, if you want to test a mouthpiece, you have to actually play it. Um, there are many other brands of mouthpiece out there. I've always wanted to do a series about Shilky mouthpieces, but never owned enough of them to sit down and and sort of talk through that. Um, you know, it's it's definitely worthwhile learning about Shilky mouthpieces. I, I should really do a whole thing about that as well. Um, but you know, Vincent Bach and Shilky, they're just our, our traditions. You know, they're, they are of the past at this point. So what are our modern options? Well, there's Warburton. Um, I spent a lot of time playing with Warburton mouthpieces, and I do mean playing. I don't necessarily mean playing music. I did also spend many years playing music with Warburton mouthpieces, and their system, if you, if you can assume that there is some uh, manufacturing consistency, which is a, a matter relating to Vincent Bach that I haven't even touched upon, um, um, if you can assume that there's some there's some manufacturing consistency within the Warburton system, then um, you know it's a good way to experiment with using the same rim but different uh, depths of cup, or maybe the same cup but different um, uh, width, you know, cup diameters. But um, the truth is that over over years of, of experimenting with the with Warburton stuff, I find that ultimately most cups and diameters only pair with a very small number of backboards and the fact that you have all these backboards available but you only but you and you have all these cups available doesn't mean that you can actually combine any of them together because you have implications in terms of stretching and compressing the octaves um, you know, in terms of your tuning, you can end up in some sticky situations or just the resistance of a mouthpiece can get really thrown off by using the wrong backbore. And people, I, you know, people who use Warburton's, I've basically met two types. Type one has gone out and bought something like, I don't know, a, let's say a 5SV and a 5 backbore or a KT backbore, and they've just used it for years. Or you found that somebody will turn up on your doorstep with a carrier bag full of mouthpieces. That's a reference to an old friend who actually did that to me once. He had two bottles of wine and a carrier bag full of backboards and tops. And, you know, you end up in this endless cycle of constantly try trying to get something that, that doesn't really exist because you need a piece of software like Vencad to sit down and really understand what you're, what you're creating and to balance the design to know whether it's a viable design. Um, and yes, of course, the other option is to go through venture mouthpieces or to trust somebody like me, who I hope you believe has done some research after sitting through this long video. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, trust somebody like me to design a mouthpiece for you. Um, I now have three trumpet mouthpieces and a cornet mouthpiece on my website, but I will work with individuals if you want um, some advice. If you want some advice, just email me and I'm happy to, to send you an email or, or make another video or, you know, we'll hop on Skype, whatever, you know. Anyway, let's tie it up here because um, I don't have much, much more to say. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to educate yourself about this, this ridiculous tradition. And maybe I'll do another dispelling folklore, um, breaking traditions video about um, an, another trumpet related topic in the future. Bye for now.